in your affections in Christ and of the world, part one. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4. Your new status in Christ. Seek the spiritual, not the earthly, verse 1 to 2. Your new life with Christ, verse 3, and your future glory with Christ. We shall endeavor to uh, take the first two points. Uh, may not be able to complete. Let us see. We have now come to the halfway mark of the study of this epistle to the Colossians. And there is an apt summary to help us to grasp the transition from doctrine to duty. From the head to the heart. From what we know to what we will do. And so we have given here a summary uh, between the two parts, the two portions of the book, chapter 1 and 2, the doctrinal part, the chapter 3 and 4, the spiritual duty, the faith of the believer, what we are to believe, and how are we to behave. Our position in Christ and our practice in Christ, who we are, God's Christ provision for believers, and Christ work through believers, our belief and our behavior, know your resources, your riches in Christ, live by faith in the light of your resources or riches in Christ. We in Christ and Christ in us, work of Christ and the walk of the Christian, heavenly standing, earthly walk. So we need to know who we are as the people of God. If we have understood who we are as the people of God, then you would see that our life, there will be a change, there will be a transformation. And so here we see from identity to responsibility, know who you are and do what we ought to do. From position to practice the privileges of the believer to the practice of the believer, from the doctrinal to the practical. So what is the doctrine? that Christ is resurrected and we are resurrected with Him. And if we are resurrected with Him, then we are to live in that resurrection power. While the first part of Colossians is doctrinal, the second part is practical, emphasizing the importance of walking in the power of the truth of the new man and our relationship to Christ as the head. And so here we are coming to the second portion and the Lord wants us to see from chapter 3 onwards how it deals with the practical holiness in relation to our own lives from verse 5 to 11 and from verse 12 to 17 in relation to others and from 5 to 11 we shall see how we are to put off the old ways. Right? The challenge is for us to take away, put away the old Adam uh, and put on the new. Uh, what are we to do to put on the new? Uh, the fellowship of Christ with others and the sequence is significant. We must be right in our own inner life if we want to be right in our relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so here we have two chapters that has been told about what is Christ. The sound doctrine, the mystery of Christ that he has revealed to us, that we have known. The circumcision of the old flesh, the old nature. And the fact that we have died and we have buried and we are raised with him. And so now it's a practical application of the doctrines that Paul has given us. And here the Christians are to not only to declare and defend the truth, but if they fail to lift out the truth, the truth is basically just what we confess, profess on a Sunday, then that's, that's no good. It must permeate to our life, our life at home, our life in the workplace, uh, and there must be a, a, a newness. So the way we conduct ourselves is determined by, is determined by what we believe. And so, 
the principles of life are important what the Bible teaches us, why we do what we do, so that we may, be, we may realize who we are uh, as being, uh, what we say, co-resurrected with Christ. Right? As Christ has risen from the dead, we are also risen with Him. And therefore, we have that new life that Christ uh, has given us. So how do we live? How we live is determined by how we think as a person. Proverbs 23 verse 7, he says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so what is it that we are to do, practically speaking, now that we know that we are risen with Christ? So verse 1 of our text, the first thought, Seek the spiritual, verse 1 to 2a. If ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of, the, of God. Set your affection on things above. So the Apostle Paul is calling attention to us. He raised, if we have been raised together with Christ, in other words, the English word Eve there uh, uh, has the meaning in view of, right? in view of who we are uh, and that uh, we have no doubt who we are as uh, being risen with Christ, that Christ has raised us up spiritually, uh, when Christ was physically raised and we identify with Him in our spiritual position, then the resurrection that is given to us must be, as uh, Jared Thomas says, a proof, a pattern, a power, a promise, a pledge. It is a proof of our acceptance of Christ's death and our acceptance with Him. It is a pattern of our holy life. So there is a proof right, that we are risen with Christ. But there is also a pattern by which we live our lives. In other words, we don't touch those things that defiles, you see. There is a power that within us, there is an abhorrence against sin that is within us. And there is a power for the Christian character and service to follow the Lord and not to compromise. And there's a power, it contains also the promise of our own physical resurrection, that one day uh, we would be taken up with the Lord at His coming. And it is a pledge to our life after. And so Paul says in Romans 4, 24 to 25, But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offences and raised again for our justification. How important it is that we know what Christ has done for us. If we know Christ, what Christ has done for us, there will be a change in us. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Walk in newness of life. There is a change in us. And, and we thank God right, that uh, we can see um, changes in the lives of uh, the people of God. Well, we praise God right, that God is doing a, a work in their lives, right, in our lives, so that uh, we would abhor sin. We realize how uh, heinous it is, and we don't want to uh, be uh, uh, disconnected with God as a result of our uh, straying away from Him, because we have understood the meaning of being uh, of straying away, the pain of it, right? the the uh, uh, the uh, the state of mind of the forlorn, right? how desperate it is. We don't want to be in that desperate state again, and therefore, uh, the Lord um, it behooves us uh, by the word of. Uh, the Apostle Paul it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. 
There are two commands that are given here. Sick and set. Right. Sick, the verb, and set your affection. That's the other verb. Right. Both are to, we are to do continually as a spiritual habit of daily life and both as an imperative that God gives us. Sick has to do with man's quest for God. Seek God. What he can obtain only from him. They seek to seek means to look for, is the idea to search for, to investigate, to examine, to consider, to deliberate the things of God. So we don't get tired uh, looking, at the th looking to Him in prayer, uh, spending time with Him, reading His Word, uh, but rather there is an effervescing uh, appetite, there is a hunger and thirst after the things of God. And here the verb, the form of the verb to seek right, is in the imperative. And this is first used by Christ himself in Matthew 6.33 when he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. So what should we seek? Paul says, seek those things which are above. So Jesus uh, tells us what, is the, uh, what are the things above. Seek the first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, seek the spiritual, the things of God and your life will be wholesomely cared for by him. Your life will be wholesomely cared, cared for by him. Keep seeking. It means to seek after, to strive for earnestly, to strive to find something that is life with God, meaning, purpose, the reason for our life, our destiny to devote serious effort to realize our desire and objective to aim at, to try to obtain uh, some state, a condition. So this seek, seek those things which are above. And Jesus explained that there are those things that we should not seek. Right? And Jesus explained it. Those who serve not God but seek mammon. Uh, Matthew 6 verse 24. Uh, just some verses back from Matthew 6.33. He says, No man can do serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And we bring this mammon into the church by the way by which we administer our life. Uh, that's very frightening uh, because we don't want this mammon uh, that our way of old way of life to disrupt the peace that is in the house of God by our uh, we said our mnemonic or memonite uh, thinking. Right? Memon is a Syrian god of riches or money. The term is usually used in a derogatory way to describe property, wealth, earthly goods. And it's used to personify the worship of a different kind of God. And that is very common. Right? That's very common because we worship this, well, all our lives right? before God would save us. And after we say we are saved, well, we may not still see uh, and still be seeking the things that are on earth. And uh, you know that the first couple... Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And what did uh, Cain do? Cain killed Abel, his brother. And what did Cain do? Well, Cain was very self-willed. He built a city. He glorified not God, but his son Enoch. And this is not the Enoch who walked with God in Genesis chapter 5, but this is the ungodly line through Cain. So, here you see there are two Enochs in the Bible, chapter 4 and chapter 5. One is the godly Enoch, one is the ungodly Enoch. Similarly, uh, there are two Lamechs in the Bible. Right? One is a line to Noah, the other one is the Lamech uh, that is described in Genesis chapter 4. Right? He murdered a man and also a boy. Right? He boasted to his wives about his murders. And he sank deeper and deeper in violence and sin amidst seeming advancement in civilization. Some generations later, in the time of Noah, God had to judge the world by the global flood. 
the pressure of a materialistic society dulls man's conscience and the godly Enoch served the living and true God. He was in the world but not of the world. And so here the Lord says to us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek those things which are above. Truly, as Paul rightly pointed out, the world needs heavenly people as never before. And this is what Christians are to be when we live up to our true identity. But if we say we are Christians and we are still very much grounded in the world, then we say that uh, it's a misnomer. Right? So Paul is saying here that uh, having understood, uh, you have the doctrine, uh, what about the practice? The practice will show right, what you believe. Uh, so it will also expose uh, what you claim to believe, but not actually what you uh, truly believe, because uh, you can be uh, exposed by your actions. Those Seek those things that are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Seek the heavenly things, Jesus says. So what do you mean by the heavenly things? Right? Well, he described in Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth, neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So Paul is seeking the people of God to examine their own hearts. Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? If your treasure is... Well, if your treasure is on this earth, then you would find that this earthly things would corrupt itself and you will be disappointed. And so Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9 to 15, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise Master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth upon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If every man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, and he himself shall be saved, and yet so as by fire. And so here, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul gives us the, the litmus test. He tells us that how are we building our lives if we are building on those things which uh, holds no strength, then we will be so disappointed at the end. We said that, yes, we have, we have been able to do all these things, but all these things that we have done uh, avail us to very little. So there is the old saying, hold tightly to what is eternal, but loosely to what is temporal. Can we make a self-check, an evaluation? What are those things that are eternal in our lives? And what are those things that are, that are temporal? The temporal things we know, uh, they will pass away. Uh, that's what you study, right? As we, you remember when we studied the course on the, the book of Ecclesiastes, right? we spoke, uh, Solomon tells us about the disappointments that he faced, how disappointed he was with his pursuits and how uh, at the end of his life he had to uh, make many uh, re amends. Uh, uh, but what he did was what the, the uh, greatest consolation is that he was able to share his woes so that we can learn from him, that we don't repeat uh, those uh, woeful things of regret at the end of life, 
that we will find ourselves uh, holding on to uh, uh, building on a, a foundation of sinking sand and finding ourselves drowned right, in the deluge. Uh, so very sad, isn't it? So <clears throat> here Paul is saying that six of those things that are above, wherein you see Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. And so Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father, what was he doing? Well, he's interceding for us that he would, we would do his will. Yeah. And things above are not things material, but rather to do with Christ's reign over the universe and he, how he fills the universe with himself, his character, his presence, with his heavenly joys. You know, before the world was created, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was in a state of perfect joy, very, very happy. And Father, Son, and Holy Ghost enjoyed that peace, that joy. And, you know, in Proverbs chapter 8, we have studied that, how uh, the Godhead extended it uh, by the creation of men made in the image of God so that men may have some inkling of an idea of that fellowship that we have, the, that the Godhead has, right? that joy of the Godhead, that peace of the Godhead, so that we may understand the heavenly things, you see. Uh, and we, as we study the, the Word, as we look to Christ, uh, we see how uh, He's able uh, to uh, cause the weary soul to be refreshed. Right? We uh, remember the hymn fondly, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Right? O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. But there's a light for a look at the Saviour. Ah, when we look at the Saviour, there's light. And life more abundant than free. What blessing it is to look to Christ and when we look to Him, right, the darkness is dispelled. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full at His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, He passed and we follow Him there. We follow Him there. Are you following Him there? Are you ready? If Christ were to call you today, are you ready? That you would follow Him into heaven? Are you ready? Have you uh, made peace with Him? Uh, so that you would follow Him where He has gone? Over us sin no more has dominion. For more than conquerors we are. His word shall not fail you. He promised, believing, believe him, and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. So here you see how we are to seek the things above, where Christ is at the right hand of the Father. So there's a man who said, I thank God that I know Christ. Because I know him, I can seek him, pray to him. I cannot imagine myself in my physical condition and having uh, got a stroke uh, that I do not know Christ. You know how hard it is to live through the night? Very, very difficult. But because I know Christ, today I'm able to go through the night, right? the darkness, the loneliness of the night. Imagine you, don't, you, you have no one, no, no, nothing, Right? To hold on to uh, alone it can be very frightening, very frightening. Seek those things that are above, that are above, and set your affections on things above, not on things on earth. Set your affection. It means to think, to have an understanding, to be wise, to direct one's mind to a thing, to direct your mind. Are you seeking, setting your affections? Are you directing your mind to the things above? 
there, there is a difference, you know. Your work will be transformed. Your family life will be transformed. When you are seeking the things above, your family life will be transformed. Your relationships will be transformed. Your work life will be transformed. And we thank God that there is indeed uh, a way by which we are to set our affection on things above. It means to follow right, what Christ has taught us, what we, we ought to do right. in the workplace, between employee and employee, in the home, between husband and wife, parents and children, in the church, amongst brethren, we must not only seek heaven, but we must think heaven. Think. You see, the trouble is this, that uh, we seek, but that seeking uh, is intermittent. Intermittent. Uh, where, where it suits us, we will do that. When it doesn't suit us, we will not do that. So we have our pressure points. Right? Certain things we can, certain things we won't. Well, should it be like that? When we say seek, it means to seek wholeheartedly. Right? Set your affection, it means set, set it wholeheartedly. Right? And he gives the reason uh, why in verse 3, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. In other words, you are eternally secure with Him. The stem of eternal security is upon you. Uh, nothing can be added, nothing can be subtracted because Christ says it is finished. No sins we commit that has not been already atoned for by His blood and our life are hidden in Christ, secure in Him. So, here, if we have understood this, that we are dead, dead, the body is crucified with Him, with the last and the affections. Your life is hid with Christ in God. And sometimes, God has to bring us through uh, many journeys of trials and temptations to help us to see and cherish and learn and to understand how precious it is to have our life hid with Christ in God. I recall uh, going to the Holy Land and you know we were on the escalator or cable car into, into Masada, the last stronghold of the Jews. And when we were up there, there was a point where the lift stopped and you could move forward and there the guide said this is the cleft of the rock cleft of the rock it's all stone but the the rock comes out and when you are under it you know the scourging sun is hidden from you you are protected from the scourging sun the cleft of the rock hidden in christ uh, protected right? uh, and here we see that our lives is hidden in him and God wants us to know uh, how precious we are in his sight and sometimes we may not realize uh, what God has done to protect us right? someone said oh uh, I it was a close shave. Uh, well, as you think of it, uh, physically speaking, it was like that. But there is a spiritual dimension that God has not revealed to us, has not shown us. Uh, that He has protected us. That He has shielded us. There could have been great calamity that took place. 
but we don't know, we don't see. God shield us by faith. We are hid in Him. We are protected by Him. Just as we were studying uh, in the book of Numbers, in Numbers 21, right, the children of Israel were murmuring to the, Lord, to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? The Lord allowed the fiery serpents to come into the camp. Right? Before that, the fiery serpents were kept outside the camp. Why? Because the Lord kept them out. The Lord protected them. They didn't see, you see, that they were in the wilderness. They are in the wild. It's a dangerous territory. And the reason why they are safe is because God has protected them. But they didn't see it. And so the Lord allowed when they began to murmur the fiery serpents to come in and bit them. So many were hurt and many cried and in their pain they cried out to the Lord and the Lord instructed Moses to build, to uh, make a brazen serpent. What was the message of the brazen serpent? Well, Christ explains it himself that it is the defeat of the serpent when he would be crucified and hung on the cross all who look to him by faith because he takes our sin you see he takes the bite he takes the serpent bite on our behalf and uh, he well the venom went into him in that sense right? uh, not us so because He shielded us, we are hid in Him. Okay? And so here, the word there is the English word crypt or cryptic, right? uh, meaning to cover, to hide, to conceal, to keep secretly, protectively, uh, keep something from being seen, uh, to, kept, to be kept secret. And so you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. What a powerful statement here that Paul is describing here. Your life is hid with Christ in God. In other words, He's shielding you. Right? Just as Job, who did not see Satan throughout the 42 chapters of, of, uh, of the book, right? uh, you can see the warfare going on in heaven. But he did not see it at all. He didn't see the, the terror uh, of the challenge. But he feels it. Physically, he feels it. He felt the oppression. He felt the persecution. Uh, but uh, uh, he did not uh, uh, face the brunt of the enemy because God was shielding him. God says you cannot take his life. You can do anything you please to him with his body, but his life is mine. To be hid in Christ. May the Lord help us to understand our privileged position, uh, how uh, we, are, we belong to the Lord, and he has instructed us to seek the heavenly things, the things that matters most. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee for thy word. Strengthen us by thy Holy Spirit and grant us thy peace and joy in the Lord Jesus Christ as we seek to set our factions on things above wherein Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Help us, Lord, to seek the heavenly things that is eternal and will not perish so that we will not be disappointed. Strengthen thy people. This I pray with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.